What's going on, you guys? Your boy Ben Mahari here, representing Mahari Nation Sports Podcast. Hope y'all been having a had a great weekend. Hope you enjoyed all the great game sevens that we saw. You know, during the weekend, you guys, we had fantastic basketball, and we got still a lot to talk about this week as we get into the conference finals. But I want to show all of my love and, and admiration to all my subscribers that really been you know sticking with me. You know what I mean? We had two great live streams during the weekend, and you know what? I might as well start doing them from here on in during the conference finals and in the finals. You know what I mean? Give you guys some of my post-game thoughts and all that other stuff. So I'm going to start doing that from here on out. But I wanted to talk about, you know, the whole situation with Ben Simmons. And at this point, it's over. The time is now to trade Ben Simmons. All right? I have given this man chance after chance. And I gave up on him after his second year in the NBA. Literally after his second year. because. To me, he has shown the inability and the unwillingness to improve his game. And it's, and it's continuing to show every single postseason. I don't care what stats he puts up. The bottom line is his lack of assertiveness, his lack of aggressiveness is what is killing the Philadelphia 76ers and is preventing them from having any dreams of winning a championship. And after everything that we saw with Markel Fultz and how the Sixers fan base tried to stick with him, even though that he his shooting woes continue on, all right, and even though he's got a shooting, you know, touch back on track in Orlando, the fact is the way that Ben Simmons played uh, last night in game seven was a complete embarrassment, all right? You sitting there the entire game, literally you played nearly almost the entire game, when you look at the stat line in Game Seven, all right. Let's post this up. Let me, I'm gonna I'm gonna read the stats to you right here now to really hit home on what happened. Um, to really hit home, basically, on what happened. All right. Game Seven, you played 36 minutes. You only took four shots. Only scored five points the entire game, and only and had 13 assists and eight rebounds. Bro, that is unacceptable. If you're a star player of this caliber. And, you, and the expectation of you is to be the next superstar in the NBA. You cannot go, you cannot go two for four, two for four in the game, and expect to win. All right, that is a completely unacceptable, and it's just, it, it's just ridiculous. And the other thing too is this: he shot thirty-four percent from the foul line, which is the lowest free throw percentage in the history of the NBA playoffs. He actually made Wilt Chamberlain, Shaquille O'Neal. Ben Wallace and DeAndre Jordan look like better free throw shooters. And it really hits home to the point that his lack of assertiveness and his lack of aggressiveness is really evident. The man is literally afraid to shoot. When you watch his game, all right, what does he do a lot of the time? He looks to try to penetrate and get to the basket or try to dish it out to somebody else. All right. His defense is not good. He was never pretty much a good defender anyway, but you want him to see to, to at least try. And this is really, and this has really been the biggest rap against him. And right now, his game to me has reached its max. He's just he's unwilling to shoot the basketball, which is the biggest fundamental in basketball. Now think of it this way: when you compare it with with Giannis, all right. Now Giannis is not the greatest shooter in the world, all right. We know that, and he's had his troubles at the free throw line. But the difference is, Giannis is aggressive. He wants to take those shots. Even if he misses them, even if he airballs them, he's not afraid of taking those shots. He's not he's not afraid to fail. When you're a superstar, you have to show the willingness to keep on going, even if things are not going well for you. Okay, Russell Westbrook was is never the greatest shooter in the world, and I've heard criticism all the time that oh he doesn't he's not a great shooter, you know this that and the third. But let me tell you this: Russell Westbrook's mentality is is that he's going to outwork you. All right. He has learned how to use the mid-range jumper to per to perfection. Okay, even if he's not his jumper is not hitting well, he's showing you that he's willing to take those jump shots, even if he's struggling. Okay, the same goes for Giannis, and the same goes for James Harden. Now, on James Harden, real quick, even though that James Harden did not play well in Game Seven, all right, I'll give I'll, I'm not going to go too far as choke as too well for TV did, all right. Unlike those times in the Rockets where he did choke. The fact is, he was actually out there giving his best when he was physically limited. 
okay? He was trying everything he could to help his team win. He just physically was not able to do anything about it. He had a terrible second half. But at least he was given his best to try to help his team win. For Ben Simmons, that's not the case. Remember, I watched this man literally pass up a wide open dunk because he was too afraid of going to the free throw line. To me, that shows lack of aggressiveness. That's a lack of that's a lack of not wanting it more. Okay? No, you do not pass up a wide open dunk to somebody else and pass it through traffic. That makes literally no sense whatsoever. And it's really getting to the point now where now I've seen a lot of Philadelphia fans turning against Ben Simmons. It has become ridiculous at this point. The man has really has really sh shown the unwillingness to improve his game. How many times have we seen every offseason where Ben Simmons appears to pretty much work on his game on Instagram, but when you hear the reports of going on or what he does in the offseason, he's, he's focused more time on chasing Instagram models than working on his basketball game. And that's, a, and that's a huge concern for me. And, you know, when I was watching some clips on, for, on uh, Undisputed this morning, I wasn't surprised at what Skip Bayless said. But it's just the ridiculousness that I just literally had to laugh at. He had the audacity to put the blame on more on Joel Embiid, in which I find it ridiculous. How could you sit there and blame Joel Embiid when he was literally playing with a partial torn meniscus in his right knee? The man was literally playing hurt throughout the playoffs in that game four against the against the. Hold on one second, real, just real quick, real quick, real quick. Didn't mean, I don't I didn't mean I had a I just had a little bit of a uh, there we go against the Washington Wizards against the Wizards he tore his he tore he tore the meniscus in his knee there was just a little bit of a minor tore that's gonna have to get repaired during the off season but the bottom line is in the game seven he played forty one minutes scored thirty one points and grabbed eleven rebounds and yes he had eight turnovers but the man was at least being aggressive at least putting everything he got. Because the big criticism against Ben Bede was is that he never played her. He always had a low threshold of pain. You could see him. He was trying everything that he could. But he, you got to remember, he is a center. You can't – the center can't always bring the ball up the court and create his own shot. You have to literally give the ball to him for him to do anything with it. And sure, he could do a better job of getting back to the basket and being a little bit more aggressive. But at least he was trying to help his team win. For Ben Simmons? That is the complete opposite. This man has continued to fail time and time again. And it's getting to the point now where now he's, pre to me, he's reached beyond his max. All right? The man is a natural right-handed person, but he's shooting left-handed. It makes no sense. And the fact that you see see other opponents literally using the hack of Ben rule to try to get him to the free throw line as a small forward and as the, as the leading guard on your team is ridiculous. There's no excuse for this right now. And honestly, looking back at the whole situ looking back at the whole so-called we trust the process situation, which I never bought into anyway, Ben Simmons is Achilles heel. He is the main Achilles heel, and this is why the Philadelphia 76ers will never ever win a championship with Ben Simmons on the team. All right. That's just it. There's no other way to put it. All right. I'm tired of this guy. Always sitting there, not taking jump shots, not not willing to be aggressive out there. It's a mentality thing. All right. It's a basically a mentality thing. And the other thing that I also want to address too is this. I've noticed that a lot of Australian basketball players, and one of my friends at work really brought this out to me that really clicked in my brain. A lot of the players from Australia are basically learning basketball through the old school way. But have you noticed a lot of them do not work on their jump shot? Have you noticed that a lot of them are not great shooters when they're when they're coming out, uh, coming out of the draft? You understand what I'm saying? This is really alarming to me. How is it that you're 24 years old and you've yet to improve your jump shot? I mean, that's just ridiculous. Hell, I could accept 400k to play in the NBA right now just to be a good shooter. All right, and I could shoot way better than Ben Simmons. You understand what I'm saying? It's really ridiculous at this point how this guy continuously flounders time and time again, and he never works on his shooting. It's disappointing to me. When you look back at 2016 draft class when he was drafted, okay, when he's drafted number one overall, look at the players that get, that pretty much gotten better. All right, Brandon Ingram, all-star. Jalen Brown, borderline all-star. 
Okay. Demontis Sabonis, all star. Okay. Who else on the board? Okay. Pascal Siakam. He's on the he's also an NBA champion. Also an all star. I mean, come on, man. It's becoming ridiculous. Malcolm Brogdon. He's a kind of a borderline all star, but he's a way better shooter than he than uh than Ben Simmons at this point. I mean, it's just getting ridiculous. It's beyond ridiculous that this man continues to fail time and time again. And this is why I'm here to tell you that it's time for this man to be traded. The game, the, the gimmick, and everything about him is over with. All right? I know Philadelphia fans have to be angry about this because they've been starving for a world championship since 1983. That was their last championship season. All right? The last time that they made it to the NBA Finals was back in 2001 with Allen Iverson. And about, and also, another thing about Iverson, all right? Sure, Allen Iverson had the bad rap of being selfish and all that, but the man was willing to take shots, and he was willing to put the team on his back and do whatever it took to win. Even though that his style of play was not was, could not equal to a championship, he at least got one game against the Los Angeles Lakers in the NBA Finals before losing in five games. A, a team that was undefeated in the first three rounds of the playoffs. I mean, come on. That, that, that shows you how, the greatness of Iverson. I don't know what to tell you. But the point is, it's over for this man. When you have Doc Rivers literally telling you in the press conference that he has serious questions if Ben, if Joel Sim, if, uh, I'm sorry, if Ben Simmons can be the can be the guy to help he lead you to a championship, that should tell you something. And especially to the fact that Doc Rivers, you know, went continued to play this guy even late in the game. When, every, when everyone in the building knew that, that the Atlanta Hawks were going to put this man in the free throw line and dare him to make free throws. Listen, that is not like it's not like the Atlanta Hawks, you know, you know, won this game, you know, going away. It was actually the game was actually in Philadelphia's grips. You know, that it was theirs for the taking. But they did not took advantage of key moments and situations. And again, it goes back to the aggressiveness of Ben Simmons and the lack thereof. And it's just becoming it's becoming a running joke. And this is why I'm here to tell you guys, it's over for Ben Simmons. The man needs to be traded. Now, the question is, if you're going to trade Ben Simmons, what would you what would what do we want to do at this point? If the, I've heard some things about maybe going to the Portland Trailblazers for CJ McCollum. No chance. You would still be in the same situation. I think that you have to go for the throat and try to trade for Damian Litter. You know what I'm saying? Try to make a trade for Damian Litter. Whatever you got to do to try to trade for Ben Simmons. But if you're going to stick with them now, I'm telling you, you're going to have much more headaches down the line. And the worst part is you got three more years of Ben Simmons to deal with here. And so I, I just I just don't understand what I just don't understand why. What can you improve on this guy? All right. He's he's a good playmaker. Yes. But the problem is he's shown his unwillingness to do jump shots or become aggressive offensively. And that's concerning to me. And this is why I this is why I gave up on the Philadelphia 76ers a long time ago and why this this duo of Joel Embiid and Ben Simmons is not tailor made for a championship. All right. When we talk about great duos of all time, you talk about duos like Shaq and Kobe, Michael and Scotty. Magic and Kareem, okay? Also, Will Chamberlain and Jerry West, okay? Great duos that really had to work off their skills with one another to win a championship, okay? Ben Simmons and Joel Embiid had expectations coming in when they first came and played together that this was going to be the duo that was going to be the ones that helped lead the Philadelphia 76ers to a championship. And time and time again, you know, they continue to flounder. What is it with Embiid, you know, struggling with injuries and Ben or Ben Simmons showing the unwillingness to be assertive offensively and take control of the game? And this is what is keeping Philadelphia from winning a championship. I'll tell you this. I will tell you this. I bet you that they wish they would have kept Jimmy Butler instead of Tobias Harris. I promise you that. And I'm not putting any shade on Tobias Harris because actually Tobias Harris actually played a hell of a game in game seven. So, but the problem with Tobias Harris is he's just he's too inconsistent to a fault. But I just felt I just felt like you know they needed a go-to guy that was gonna keep the pressure off of Ben Simmons and Joel Embiid and Jimmy Butler fit that mold. But they could, but they did not want to resign him, and he left for Miami. So hey, looking back now, I bet you they wish that they had Jimmy Butler at this point. But my exclusive to the video is this: 
Ben Simmons, to me, has reached his peak. There's no, to me, he could try any other method he wants to until he will, until he has the mental mental realization in his mind that he has to show that he could be a willingness to show the willingness to not be afraid to fail and go for a uh, go for his other side of being aggressive on the offensive side and the willingness to shoot the ball. The Philadelphia 76ers are going to continue to flounder in the playoffs. They were the number one seed in the playoffs. I mean, in the Eastern Conference. And had the expectations of getting out of the East to possibly win a championship. And unfortunately, they failed. Not only they failed, but they failed miserably in the process against an upstart Atlanta Hawks team that many people felt that this was going to be either a second rounder type of team at best. Now, the Hawks are in the Eastern Conference Finals. And can I just say, can I just say that uh, can somebody just put the, the permanent contract on Nate McMillan? Because this man has done a tremendous job coaching this Atlanta Hawks team to the conference finals. All right. Get the man his due. Get the man get the man a long-term deal and let him continue to build on this fantastic team. Can you please do that, Atlanta? Do yourself a good favor for that. But point is, though, man, I'm giving no blame for Joel Embiid on this. And I'm not giving any blame on Doc Rivers on this. Although I could. I could give some blame for Doc Rivers for, for sticking with Ben Simmons too much or staying loyal to a fault. The problem, the bottom line is Doc Rivers is, can't, is not playing anymore. He can't shoot. He can't defend for ben, for ben Simmons. He can't force him to do other things for him on the floor. Ben Simmons has to show a willingness to wanting to do that if he wants to help his team win. And when you have both Doc Rivers and Joel Embiid basically in their own words, you know, pointing the finger at Ben Simmons, that should tell you something, guys. And at this point right now, you, I, I'm, I'm just pretty much done with Ben Simmons. And I know a lot of Philadelphia fans are pretty much done with Ben Simmons too, considering the fact that they gave him the chance at the chance at the chance to show to show what he can do or show major improvements to help the Sixers get over the hump. And time and time again, he has let them down. And I'll tell you this: Philadelphia fans are the hardest fans. You know, to approve, to get approval of. They will support you if you are giving your best effort, but they will rip you a new one and they will force you out of town if you fail up to expectations or showing no effort at all. And at this point right now, Ben Simmons' days in Philadelphia are numbered. And if he doesn't get it together next season, it's over for him. I mean, there's no other way to put it at this point. Right now, he's on borrowed time with the Philadelphia 76ers. And if I were the I was over the GM right now, <clears throat> I just trade him, put him on the trading block, and see what you can get out of him. And honestly, I don't know if you're gonna get much a much good value out of him. You could have gotten something at least two or three years ago, but now you can see how much his value is, you know, diminished to a certain degree of how much of how he performed in the postseason. That just is what it is. But that's just my two cents of the whole situation. I know this video was a little bit long, but I just had to get more of my thorough thoughts out there because it's just disappointing how a guy of this talent like Ben Simmons and you still can't improve your jump shot. I mean, it's just, it's beyond ridiculous. It's literally slaps in the face of every person that has tried that has played basketball. I'm a better shooter than Ben Simmons. That's embarrassing, man. It's absolutely embarrassing. And I can't deal with it. I simply just cannot deal with it. I can't wrap this around my mind to understand why you couldn't improve your jump shot. I mean, it's just, it's, it's, it's literally embarrassing. But that's just my two cents. You guys let me know what you think in the comment section below. And with that, I'm out. Peace.